Pastor Chooks Obina Ogoye. Pastor Chooks is the lead pastor of Resurrection Life Church in Johannesburg. He is a passionate teacher and preacher of the Word of God and has been blessed by God with the uncanny ability and gift to explain and unpack deep and complex spiritual truths in very easy to understand and apply formats. Pastor Chooks has been involved and active in marketplace ministries. He's an entrepreneur and business consultant with an avid passion for raising other entrepreneurs and business leaders. He has taught and facilitated many leadership and entrepreneurship courses and seminars. He is the host of broadcast programs on Facebook, YouTube, and several podcast channels. Living the life with Pastor Chooks, the amazing power of woman. Thank God it's Friday. Good evening. Welcome uh, to a, a Wednesday evening. We are sharing on the goodness of God. My name is Chuck Sugoye. Tonight is episode 176. 176. Uh, we have been uh, sharing on the mini series, The Goodness of God Keeps His Hands Open Towards Us. Uh, in this series, we are seeking to understand the mind of God and, and God's disposition towards provision for his children. The goodness of God as it relates to provision. <coughs> so we are sharing part 15 in that mini-series today. Part 15. All right, let's go through the scriptures, uh, the key scriptures for our thoughts in this series. Uh, we read in Psalm 145, verse 15. Psalm 145, verse 15 and 16. It says, the eyes of all look expectantly to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Then Psalm 104, verse 27. Psalm 104, verse 27. Psalm 104, verse 27. These all wait for you, that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand, they are filled with good. Now, these two texts that we're sitting on here is communicating a certain sense of responsibility that God has over his creation. He has a sense of responsibility to provide for them. Look at this one. He says, the eyes of all look expectantly to you. Why is everything looking expectantly to God? Because God has taken responsibility to provide for them. And, and that responsibility is, uh, is being responded to by expectation. Hiya. So, so creation expectantly wait for supply from the source because the source has taken responsibility to provide. <laughs> We, we, we get the same sense in, in the other psalm, Psalm 104, verse 27. He says, these all wait for you. Can you see that? These all wait for you. Speaking of expectation, that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand, they are filled with good. So, so there is a responsibility that God has towards his creation. It's important we know that. He, he, he has a responsibility to provide for his creation. And he's taking that responsibility. And he is not um, irresponsible towards that task that he has taken. He has taken it to provide and he sees to it. That's why he says he gives them their food in due season. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 24, in Matthew chapter 24 verse 45, go with me there, go with me there. Matthew 24, 45, the Bible says, Matthew 24, 45, it says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? That's a responsibility. And this, this servant is given responsibility to look after his fellow servants. And the, 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 that responsibility, he's expected to discharge it as at when due. When he doesn't discharge it as at when due, he will be considered to be unfaithful. 
he'll be considered to be irresponsible. Now, it's important that you note what I just shared with you. All right. So, yesterday we, we began to talk about, you know, uh, God being the great provider. And there are men and women he wants to be under providers. Just like he is the great shepherd, and there are people who are under shepherds. He is the great apostle, there are under apostles. He's the great intercessor, there are other, you know, there are people who are intercessors in the body of Christ. You know, he is the great teacher, there are teachers in the body of Christ. So he is a great provider, and he wants men and women to take up the role of under providers. I call them kingdom finances, but they are under providers that supply the needs and the resources required to execute the work of God in the earth. See, what God needs to do in the earth requires men to channel it. This is why, even in the list of spiritual gifts, there is a mention of the gift of generosity or the gift of liberality. Libra, liberality, yes. There's that gift. So, so there are people who are given the grace to be able to give I'm not saying other believers don't give. Every believer is supposed to give. But there are people who have a special grace to give. They are called kingdom financiers in our modern, you know, contemporary uh, language. Uh, but I, what I'm saying from scriptures, that they are under providers. Why there's a great provider, they are under providers. They work under the great provider to mirror him as they provide for the work of God. Somebody needs to take up that calling if that's what God has called you to do. Take up responsibility for that calling. To say, I am just like I have taken responsibility for the sheep of God that he has committed into my hands. In fact, before I had one sheep to look after, I became a shepherd. It was, listen, it was the call of God upon my life and that calling to be a shepherd that when I accepted the responsibility, I began to step out to go look for the sheep that I am called to shepherd. I started doing evangelism, reaching people, bringing them from the street, bringing them home, teaching them the word of God. And the church started. I remember when the church started, it was few people in my living room. And I found them on the street. I invited them, you know, I ministered to them on the street and I invited them home for a Bible study. And they came for a Bible study. And I began to teach them the word of God. And we started. And more people were joining until the church has become what it is. But I took responsibility for my calling. I took responsibility as an under shepherd. Even when I had no sheep, I began to look for sheep. I am still looking for sheep as we speak. <laughs> I am still looking for sheep. As I am doing what I am doing, I make an altar call. I invite people in. I bring people to church. I ask them to join. And they connect. And they accept me as their shepherd. I begin to look after them. I take responsibility for them. When someone commits and says, I, I want to be a member of your flock, I take spiritual responsibility. When someone says, I want to be your spiritual son or your spiritual daughter, I take responsibility. I begin to pray for them. I begin to teach them the word. I begin to care for them. I begin to watch over them in the spirit to make sure that they are okay. There is a sense of responsibility that I carry towards those people. The same thing. An intercessor will take responsibility for the gift that God has put inside of them and the calling that God has put inside of them. And that responsibility, they discharge that responsibility while as they pray. And this is what I, I want to bring across tonight. We're talking about mirroring God as a great provider. And we've talked about the things, some of the things that will disqualify you from mirroring God as, a, as, as an under provider. Okay, I'm using that language, it's my coinage. I'm using that language just like there's a great shepherd and there are under shepherds. There's a great apostle, there are under apostles. There's a great provider, there are under providers. So, so the things that disqualify you from functioning well as an under provider, this is one ministry that I know the Spirit of God is wanting to raise many, many people in the church to take up that role. Listen, when, when we hear a prophecy that God wants to transfer the wealth of the nations into the hands of believers, 
Who are these believers? They are providers. He wants to transfer the wealth of the Gentiles into the hands of believers. These are the people I'm talking about. God wants to put stuff on them and anointing to attract wealth so that he can use them as channels of distribution to fund his agenda and his thoughts and the things he wants to do for the body of Christ and for the world. There are almost 8 billion people that need to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. A, a lot of money is required to do that. Trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars is required to do that. I am telling you, to get them saved and to get them um, um, taught the word of God that they come to the knowledge of the truth. To get them saved and to get them discipled require almost a billion people. We need trillions and trillions of dollars to do that job. And God wants to pass it through believers. Uh, so that, and these believers are the ones I'm talking about today. So, we talked about that to be an under provider, number one, you need to get a revelation of God as an infinite, infinite supply. Okay? You need to get a revelation of God as infinite supply. You need to, number one, number, number two, you need to get a revelation of God as absolute supply. I already explained those, those terminologies. All right? You need to get a revelation of God deep inside of you as infinite supply. You need to get a revelation of God as absolute supply. Number three, you need to have humility. <laughs> you need to have humility. You need to kill pride. Pride needs to go completely in your life. Number four, you need to have intimacy. Build solid intimacy with the Lord. Because in the kingdom, it, supply flows through intimacy. Security flows through intimacy, not abundance of money. Number five, you need to deal with greed and covetousness. You need to, your life must be free from Bible said, beware of covetousness. I dealt with that yesterday. Beware of covetousness and greed. You can't have greed in your life. You can't have covetousness in your life. You know, we, we talked about it yesterday. These are the things that, that when, when they are there, they disqualify you from being an under provider. A lack of revelation of the infinite supply in nature of God will disqualify you. A lack of revelation of the absolute supply nature of God will disqualify you. A lack of, number three, a, a, a lack of humility will disqualify you. Number four, a lack of intimacy will disqualify you. Number five, greed and covetousness will disqualify you. In fact, we should put greed and covetousness as two separate things because they are not exactly the same. Greed, number five. Covetousness, number six. So these are six things that an under provider needs to work on to qualify to be trusted. Oh, yeah, yeah. To be qualified to be trusted with kingdom resources, with 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 um, the amount of wealth that God wants to bring to the to the body of Christ. You got to qualify on those six things. And I want to talk about the seventh one tonight. But let me let me you know uh, say this. Let me just drop this. Then I go on. You know, there's a difference between covetousness and, and greed. Covetousness is to reach out for what God did not release to you. It's to desire what God is not giving you. To desire someone's wife, God is not giving you someone's wife. To desire someone's car, God is not giving you someone's car. To desire someone's house, God is not giving you someone's house. Remember, he, the scripture we read says, He opens his hands and they are filled with good. So, a, an under provider opens his hands as God opens the, his. So, so, so they, they, when God opens his hands, they open theirs because they are nothing but channels. So an open hand of God means an open hand of a kingdom financier and then resources flow. And, and so when, when a kingdom financier is reaching for something the open hands of God did not provide, that is called covetousness. And greed is when they selfishly when you selfishly or excessively grab and hold on to more than is needed or more than is deserved or more than is allotted to you, that's greed. So a kingdom financier who or a, an under provider or a channel who, when God opens his hands, instead of them to open theirs and let it flow through, 
They grab it. <laughs> they grab what God has, has released and they hold on to it. That is greed. That disqualifies you from being a, a trusted under provider. We, we, we are in a season that the Spirit of God is wanting to raise trusted under providers. So you cannot have greed, covetousness, pride, lack of intimacy. You can't have them. You can't have a lack of revelation. You can't. No, you can't. You, you got to have these things to qualify and the resources begin to flow through you. I see you arising as a kingdom financier. I see you arising as a trusted under provider, working with a great provider to provide for the agenda of God in the earth, to provide for the agenda of God, for your man of God, to provide for the agenda of God, for your local assembly. You, 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 to provide for the agenda of God, to, to feed the poor, to, to, to help the needy. Yes, this is what God wants to do. You know, I said it yesterday. Those five areas of giving, an under provider, every under provider that is what they are sought, that carries their calling with a sense of responsibility, will be given in those five areas. Tithes, offerings, sowing to your prophet or to your man of God, to support your man of God, to give to your man of God. Every time God blesses you, according to Galatians chapter 6, verse 6, to give to the poor and then to sponsor kingdom advancement projects. Every other provider must be involved in all five dimensions. That's how the anointing, the anointing for under provision flows in those five dimensions. Tithes, offerings, giving to your man of God, giving to poor people around you, less advantaged people around you, giving to kingdom advancement projects, building church buildings, sponsoring crusades, Sponsoring prayer rallies, paying for missionaries to go overseas and minister the word of God somewhere else. You take the gospel to another nation. Paying for television broadcast. These are all kingdom advancement projects. Every, you know, paying for stadiums for huge evangelical meetings and so on and so forth. Those are efforts to advance the kingdom. You are supposed to give in those five dimensions. All right. So the seventh, the seventh uh, uh, factor, or the seventh um, is the factor. Should I call it? Yeah, you know, I've given you six already. The seventh thing that you need to have as a trusted under provider is a sense of responsibility. For you to mirror the great provider, I've shown you. I started by showing you that the great provider carries a sense of responsibility. To provide for the for those who are looking up to him. For all of creation, he has a sense of responsibility. You also have to have a sense of responsibility for where God has assigned you. Because we cannot talk about faithfulness without responsibility. It is, it is your, di your uh, diligent attendance to your responsibility that makes you faithful. So if you're a kingdom financier that God has positioned in a certain church... Because every believer needs to be planted in the local church. There is no, no believer that is allowed to operate like a, 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 lone, a lone ranger. You must be planted in a local church. You must be part of a local assembly. Even if God has given you a translocal ministry, there still has to be a base. There still has to be a church where you are planted, where you are a member, where your tithe goes. All right. So when you are planted as a kingdom financier in a local assembly, you have to take responsibility. Take responsibility for the calling that God has put upon you. Take responsibility for that mantle that has been put upon you, for the gift that God has put upon you. You know, when, when you receive the gift and you begin to press into the gift, a mantle comes upon you. Ah, yeah. A mantle comes upon you to help you deliver the gift. So, so if you sense you have a gift of giving, then the, a mantle comes upon you as you take on responsibility to deliver. But there are a lot of believers who are irresponsible. A lot of believers who God has called to be kingdom financiers. But they are irresponsible towards their calling. You, you, can, you will not be one of those. If you are one of those, you need to repent tonight. They are irresponsible. They are unfaithful. They are not given their tithe. They are not given their offerings. They are not supporting the man of God. They never gave to the man of God. They are not, you know, 
doing the things they're supposed to do to the poor, do for the poor. They are not sponsoring kingdom advancement projects. Let me tell you something. Of these five areas, you know, as a kingdom financier or as an under provider, as you grow in your relationship with God, you begin to hear God give you instructions how to channel resources in each one of these five areas. There are people that God say, tells them to give 90% away of what it is that comes in. Those are kingdom distributors. 90% of what it is that comes in. I know somebody who say, God said, I must give double tight. So they give 20%. They don't give 10% as a tight. They give 20% as a tight in their church. Then they give the offerings. Then they support a, their man of God. I, a, a friend of mine was sharing of, you know, uh, he pastors a church. Uh, and he told me that there's this brother who, who, who in his church came and said he wants to start a business to sell suits. And that he was going into a, a covenant with God. For every 10 suits that he sells, he sells one to the pastor. For every 10 suits that he sells, he sells one to the pastor as part of his uh, stewardship of the resources from his business. So for every 10 suits, he, sell, sell, he gives the pastor one. This pastor showed me the room where there, there, there were like maybe 300 suits or more there. A time came when he told this guy, you know what, I have enough suits. Convert the value of the suit into cash and give me. Don't give me any more suits. I, the, 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 this guy's business boomed. From one outlet, I am told now he has like 12 outlets where he's selling suits and he's maintained his covenant with God. Right? These are people who understand. So God began to bless his business and prosper his business. And, and as he keeps, you know, uh, his part of the bargain, God, you know, you can't, God is not a debtor to any man. Uh, you know, so, so, and there, there are other people, there's somebody I know, someone, someone I raised, I pastored them, and they are into building, they are into building and construction. They, they, they told me that they made a covenant with God to build church buildings, to build church buildings and give it to churches for free, to build church buildings and give it to churches for free. Now, now, this is, this is so powerful. So as, at the time that I, I was in touch with them last, they had built three. Church buildings of different sizes. You know, 100-seater, 200-seater, 300-seater, 500-seater. And the, he said their dream is to build 3,000 of those in their lifetime. 3,000 churches in different cities and villages around the world. That's their commitment. As they make money from their construction business, this is what they do. So, so what they, for the three buildings they have, or they have, as at the time I was talking, what they, one was like a 50, 60 seater hall, another one was like 150, another one was like a 300. And that's where they started being faithful. So what it is, you know, a, a person wants to start a church, they can give him that hall. You know, say, you know, for two years, or for one year, or whatever. When their numbers exceed that place, then they can move to somewhere else and then another church will come there. So can you see? And that's how they are funding the gospel and, and advancing the... So when a, a young pastor wants to start a church, he doesn't have to start worrying, where do I get rent? There's a kingdom financier who has built a church building that sits about 60 people. And then he can start from there. When he fills that hall, he can go to two services. And then when he has his own resources, then he can go and, you know, get a building and then vacate that place. Another person use it. That's kingdom advancement. That's the dream that God gave to this person. And they want to build 3,000 halls. I know about another kingdom financier that built this massive auditorium. And, and you know, built it in their village. And... A pastor who they connected with came and planted a church. And, you know, doing church there, this is their giving to the kingdom of God. They built that church building. When I saw the picture of it, I was so excited. Now, these are different ways that people take responsibility for the gift that God has given to them, for the calling that they have. They've taken responsibility to advance the gospel. 
Can I ask you a question? Where God has put you today, have you taken responsibility for your assignment in that place? How is God leading you? you got to take responsibility. Listen, let me show you some things. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Your calling will not be fulfilled if you don't take responsibility for it. It's true. Your calling, like I said, I took responsibility for my calling as a pastor. And I, I grow that calling, grow that anointing, and I am still responsible, and I'm still growing it. I am still growing it. It's the same way you got to take responsibility for the gift God has given you, where he has positioned you. You take responsibility and begin to serve faithfully with what God has given to you there. See, what it means to take responsibility is you can be counted on. If you make a commitment, let me take the tithe for instance. If you make a commitment in a church and say, I'm a part of this church, then your tithe has to come when it is due. You can commit and say every 25th, my tithe will be there. It's not 26th, 25th. Then the pastor and the leader of that ministry or the people who organize the finances can count on that money coming on the 25th because they plan. There are some things that need to be paid. They know 25th, that money will come and we will use it. They can't, it, it's difficult to run an organization without, you know, predictability of income. This is one of the things that people do not know. That's why God wants you to be faithful. you got to give in due season. When you're supposed to give it, you give it. That's faithfulness. You commit. You make it, take a responsibility and commit. I will give when I'm supposed to give. And then God can count on you. Heaven can count on you. If you have said, okay, I'm going to be sponsoring um, a, a motherless baby's home or an orphanage, and you say, you know, on the 20th, every month, I'm putting 100000 in the account. Then do it on the 20th. Be faithful to give them what you have committed in duces, and that's what it means to take responsibility. Then they can plan around it. Then they can count on it. Being unfaithful in giving food in due season is God is frowns at it as we saw in Matthew. Let me show you. Look at this scripture. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. He says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call an election sure. There's a diligence required to make your calling and your election to be established. There's a diligence required. As an under provider, do you have that diligence? Do you have that, that commitment, that responsibility? He says, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. You will never stumble in your calling. I declare today, you will never stumble in your calling. In the name of Jesus, your calling will stand. Your calling will be established. Your calling will stand the test of time. And you will not stumble in it. It takes taking dilig uh, uh, be being diligent. Being consistent, being responsible. Take the responsibility of where God has put you. Listen, you know, I, 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 get, to, I get to read this. Go with me to the book of uh, Nehemiah. The book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cup bearer in a foreign country. And he sensed a burden in his heart. Concerning the, 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 the state of things back home in Jerusalem. Now, now I read Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 1. And the words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakaliah, it came to pass in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year as I was in Shushan the citadel, that Hanani, Hanani, one of my brethren, came with men from Judah. And I asked them, I asked them, I asked them, I took initiative, I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped who has survived the captivity concerning Jerusalem. This man carried a burden for Jerusalem. That's how God puts callings. A burden, a burden. Maybe you carry a burden to finance the work of God. You carry a burden to... It's something only you can understand. I, you know, we all carry different burdens. I have a burden. One of the burdens I have is to empower women and help women become what God wants them to be. It's a burden. I cannot explain it. it. I just feel it inside of me. 
I, I carry a burden to help kingdom financiers. It's a burden to raise entrepreneurs and kingdom financiers. It's a burden. It's one of the burdens I carry. So, so this man was carrying a burden. I want to ask you today, if you feel a burden regarding advancing the work of God with finances, you are an under provider. You need to take responsibility. If you, if you feel a burden for the poor, to help the poor, you are a, an under provider. You need to take responsibility for that. In the church where you are, you need to be responsible as, as the, you know, committed to the welfare department of that church. You need to be re responsible. Look at what the Bible says here. So, and they said to me, verse 3, the survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. Verse 4, so it was when I heard these things that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days. You can't fake these things. When there's a burden, when you see something wrong, it, 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 it just does something to you. It hurts you badly. This man mourned. This man wept for many days. Many days is not two days. Many days is not three days. It, for many days, we're talking about weeks here. That was how bad the burden was. And he began to pray. He took responsibility for that burden and began to pray. I'm asking you today as an under provider, are you taking responsibility to pray? Is the state of the, God's house, is the state of the work of God, is the state of the agenda of God that God has brought you into? Is, 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 it, is it okay? Well, what, is, what is happening inside of you? Or you're nonchalant? Or you are, you, are, you are indifferent? You cannot be indifferent. You take responsibility. Nehemiah took responsibility. God is looking for men and women who will take responsibility to say the work of God must go on. This church cannot struggle like this. This pastor cannot be straining. No! My pastor can strain. My pastor can struggle to, you know, put AC, to build a building, to buy equipment, to buy bus, to pay for the gospel on TV. No! This burden is supposed to be carried by the people who have been positioned there. And this, once you take responsibility, you begin to be faithful in that which is little. And then much will be committed into your hands. That's the way it works. So Nehemiah took time to pray. Now, now look, at, look at verse 11. This is important. Look at verse 11. Chapter 1, verse 11. He says, O oh Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name. And let your servant prosper this day. Let prosperity come to me. Why? Because I have a burden and I need that prosperity to advance that course in the kingdom. Prosperity will respond to a burden. When you have the burden concerning the house of the Lord, concerning the dilapidated state of the agenda of God, and you take it up in prayer, that's where all calling starts. The calling of a kingdom financier is not in the marketplace. It's in the place of intimacy. It's in the place of prayer. That's where you pray. You, you begin to, you know, labor in the spirit. And then God begins to give you favor, begin to give you ideas, begin to give you strategy, instruction, step by step. This was what happened for Nehemiah. I pray, grant me, grant him mercy in the sight of this man. For I am, I was the king's cupbearer. Verse, chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Atazaxes, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I had never been sad in his presence before. Can you see that? I have never been sad in his presence. All of a sudden, I am sad and I'm not pretended. I am sad. It's, something is hurting me because of the mantle. Ay, ay, ay. And he became sad that he couldn't hide it. I understand what I'm talking about. Because that's what happens to me when I see a woman abusing herself or someone abusing a woman. I feel it. I see when a, a, a kingdom financier is not doing I feel it. He was so sad he couldn't hide it. May God raise under providers who will carry the burden of God's agenda. And they will be sad and they will lose nights of sleep because they are laboring in prayer. Laboring to get strategy, laboring to open 
open doors of you know supernatural provision so that they can fund what needs to be funded relieve the men of god from the pressure of worrying about bills and, and or children who can eat somebody needs to, oh somebody needs to carry that burden i pray today that that burden will come upon you in the name of jesus that you take up what needs to be taken up therefore the king said to me why is your face sad since you are not sick this is nothing but sorrow of heart <laughs> even the king picked it up and the king said what what can i do how can i help this burden and the bible said and he prayed and god gave him gave him wisdom of what to ask but he came from a place of prayer i told you intimacy is what produces supply for a kingdom financier intimacy intimacy and he prayed and god answered and gave him resources and gave him favor and he went to go and do the work of god i want to i want to wrap this up to this 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 evening by saying you need to take up responsibility and be faithful and be dependable don't, don't let your if you are one of those people who are called to be kingdom financial don't let your tight don't let your offerings be discussed whether you come to church or not your offering must be sent being in church offering is not a ticket you know, you, you pay for the seat when you sit on it. If you're not there, you don't give. No, you don't understand your calling. I am a kingdom financier. Whether I come to church or not, I must give my offering. I must give my tithe. Because the work of God needs it. There's a sense of responsibility to give to the work of God. You need to take that up. I must give to my pastor. I must give. You, it's, a, it's a responsibility. God is looking for people who will take it up. When you take it up, resources will come. When Nehemiah took it up, resources came. My goodness, the king granted him supernatural favor. With, you know, God gave him supernatural favor with the king. And the king gave him resources. The king gave him access, gave him letters to other kings and other territories. And, he, and gave him soldiers to escort him. That's what happened. Those are resources. It comes when people take up responsibility in the spirit. I'm asking you today, where God has planted you, are you taking responsibility for the work of God in that place to provide? To provide. There are things in the heart of the Father he is counting on you to latch in on and provide so that that assignment can be executed. So that the will of God can be done on earth as it is in heaven. Somebody hear what the Spirit of God is saying today. I am done. <laughs> Let me tell you we have this broadcast on audio podcast, Spotify, Google Podcast, Breaker, Pocket Cast, Radio Public. Search for Living the Life with Pastor Chucks, Understanding the Goodness of God. You're going to find it. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pastor Chucks Obino Goye, or our Facebook page. You can like our Facebook page, Pastor Chucks Obino Goye. Now, th those are the places where you find these things. Share what you have heard. If there's a kingdom financier that you know, share this file with them. This episode 176, share it with them. Let them begin to take responsibility. Ha. Ah, let them begin to take responsibility. God bless you. I pray for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for all my hearers. Anyone who, who feels convicted by what I have shared or who feels a connection, Lord, I pray today in the name of Jesus that as the process that conviction and process to make up their mind to be faithful and to be dependable with their given, with what they have committed to give, Lord, grant them the grace. Grant them the grace and the faithfulness to be responsible. I command the spirit of irresponsibility to leave them now and they'll be responsible for the calling that's upon their life. I thank you, Father, for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night. I continue next week uh, with episode... 177 part 16 on on the subject of provision and the goodness of god but tomorrow is amazing power of woman broadcast uh, i hope to see you at 7 p.m south african time good night god bless you there comes a time in your life when you need a change an upgrade you need upliftment you need lasting results you just want your life to be real you need your life to be meaningful deep 
full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence, clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website .reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.